on this example, things are written a little bit differently, but um, we're getting some of the same information we've had before. And in fact, we're already given the confidence interval. We're told that the study asked respondents, if you've ever been married, how old were you when you first married? And the results are summarized below. So this is just giving a name to what they measured. That is not something we need to worry about. We're told the sample size here, that should be a little n, because it's a sample size, not a population size. This is x bar. This is s. This is s over square root of n, the standard error of the mean. And they've already computed the confidence interval or 99% level. Uh, by the way, the standard error of the mean, where we took sigma, uh, S over square root of N, that has been rounded. And so this, I'm sure, has also been rounded. Use the summary to determine the point estimate. So that's the mean that they printed. Uh, 28.810. No work. Just reading the table. The margin of error. Okay, that's going to take some work. Because this is a large sample, there would be 26,639 degrees of freedom, but that is not on the table. So, uh, let's see here. There are two possible approaches. One is more conservative. To say, oh, I'm looking at a 99% confidence interval. Um, 100 minus 99 is 1%. You take half of that. Half a percent is 0 0.005. Well, you could go with the larger T value in that column. Uh, since they don't have degrees of freedom for 26,639, but something lower than that, the closest thing you could get that would be lower than that number of degrees of freedom for that column, we would have 2.05, sorry, 0 0.005. We would have the 2.581. However, this textbook author may be saying that sample is so large that the sampling distribution of X bar is so close to normally distributed, he may want us to use the Z score here. So I'm going to try both. I'll start with the 2.581. Your margin of error is equal to your T value times your standard error of the mean. And we were given that that was 4.828. You're not round. So 12.461. And they don't like that. So let's try the using the z-score at the bottom. Such a large sample. Assuming it's super close to normal. It's a very close value. Okay, give me a moment. I'm going to pause this and think. Okay, I'm going to try one other thing. I go to inverse T. Again, that was a 99% confidence interval we were being told about. So alpha over 2. 
was 0 0.005. And since the sample size was 26,640, we have 26,639 degrees of freedom. Take the absolute value of that. So I'm going to multiply by negative one. Uh, let's see here. And I'm going to multiply that by the standard error of 4.828. Oh. Okay. What was I putting in? All right. That's where tiredness comes in. I was putting in the standard deviation instead of the standard error. So I could put the points 030, or let's see how exact we can be. Uh, point. <sighs> It'll multiply that by uh, standard deviation over the sample size. Again, you only use N minus 1 for degrees of freedom, telling you either what to put in for degrees of freedom on inverse normal or um, what row to look in on table 7. But wherever you see N when you're figuring out uh, S over square root of N, you're just putting in N. Okay, so do not round. Let's try 0 0.0761. Because I don't know if they wanted the table with from a thousand degrees of freedom or using the Z-score. If there's no dash T here suggesting using technology, Oh, I missed a zero after the decimal point. So I'm really not sure, but whatever I come up with should be super close anyway. Nine eight eight three seven. Zero seven six one. Nine eight eight three seven. Okay. So point oh seven six. Really close. So, our interpretation is that we can be 99% confident of the age when they first married being between these two values. Verify the results. We get a lower bound. Okay, one point eight one. Lower bound. We're gonna have subtraction. Like I said, I'm not sure what they wanted there. Let's try the two point five seven six from the z score at the bottom of the point zero zero five column. Apparently, that is what they wanted. So I'll bet I would have come up with exactly what they did um, had I not used inverse T plus no. Everything else is staying the same. Wait, 576, 6640, 1.886. And you could actually type that in and when rounded to three places, you should get these values that we're getting for the lower and upper bounds. Why is the margin of error so small? Because it's a huge sample. All right, that's it for that one.